to the Meccans for a second, a very important point for all Muslims to understand. I told you the Meccan people, they were the first recipients of the Qur'an, they received two-thirds of the Qur'an, the Prophet spent a huge part of his life with them, even before becoming a messenger So these people, you can say, had the best opportunity to accept the religion of Allah than any other nation on the face of this earth. And yet they still were willing to kill their own messenger These are the worst of the worst of the worst of the criminals. So when Allah says, those disbelievers, they're hopeless. لا يؤمنون, they're not gonna believe. It's understandable. But you know what baffles me? What shatters me completely? is that when Rasulullah went finally back all the way to Mecca. After leaving Mecca, the first time he came back all the way to Mecca was you know, several years later at the instance of Hudaybiyah. This is about six, seven years later, he comes back to Mecca all the way to make Hajj peacefully. And even then, they tried to attack him. They actually attempted assassination against the Prophet And they failed in that attempt. And now the Muslims are heated. And then Uthman radiallahu anhu, after lots of negotiations, goes inside Mecca to try to sort out things. But he's held, he's basically under house arrest, and a rumor is spread that Uthman radiallahu anhu has been killed. When the Muslims came for Hajj peacefully, no harm intended, and now their ambassador has also been killed. After an attempt has been already made on the life of the Prophet ﷺ, now the Muslims are ready for war. And the Prophet ﷺ took an oath from them that they're gonna fight. But then they were ready, ready to fight to avenge the death of Uthman radiallahu anhu. But then Uthman comes walking back into the camp. He's okay. So the fire comes down. But the, the reason I'm highlighting that to you is an ayah came down that turned my world upside down. It turned my world upside down. They were about to walk into, they were about to attack Mecca. Who are the people of Mecca? I've already told you. The worst enemies of Islam the ones who received most of the Qur'an, the ones who drove their messenger out, they deserve no opportunities. And they should be waged war against. What does Allah say? وَلَوْلَا رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاءٌ مُؤْمِنَاتٌ لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ أَن تَطَعُوهُمْ Man! Allah says, had it not been for believing men and believing women that you have never known, that you have never known, that live in Mecca, that you would have trampled all over him, an ugly stain would have hit you without you even knowing. You would have ended up killing believers. What is Allah saying? In Mecca, the enemies of Islam, even within their families, somebody quietly became Muslim, never told anybody. And when the Muslims were about to attack Mecca, Allah says, by the way, one of the reasons I didn't let that attack happen is because there are secret Muslims inside Mecca till now that you will never know. You will never know. <laughs> لِيُدْخِلَ اللَّهُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ So Allah can enter into His mercy whoever He wants. Why am I telling you all of this? Even in a clear-cut case like Mecca, where you can say the people of Mecca are kuffar, Allah will never guide them. They deserve punishment. You can write them off. Even then, all the way by the end of the struggle of the Prophet These are the last two, three years of the struggle. Even then, Allah says, there might be somebody who Allah will enter into His mercy. And there are those who might believe. So the point of all of this is when you read الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who have disbelieved in the Qur'an, it is context-based. And most of the time, it is referring to very, very bad people. It is not referring to just any non-Muslim. It's referring to the worst of them, who have been the most stubborn. And they don't want to budge from their position. Whether you warn them or not, they just don't want to hear it. Who's being held responsible in this ayah? They are. They are being warned, and it didn't even matter if you warned them or not. They are completely stubborn in their ways. Those are the people Allah calls الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا That is not a light term in the Qur'an. That is not a loving term in the Qur'an. When Allah Azza wa calls someone a kafir, He doesn't... This, this is the, one of the worst words you can use for somebody. So when we see the word الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا in the Qur'an, and we oversimplify it and you know, mean it to extend to all non-Muslims in every context, that is a very serious problem. That's not even something that Sahaba were willing to do. Ibrahim السلام, doesn't love his father? He doesn't love his father? Until the very end, until Allah tells him to leave? Until Allah tells him to not make istighfar anymore? Nuh السلام, doesn't love his son? And for 950 years, all this time he doesn't love his family? 
until the very, very end when Allah had revealed to him, that's it, now he's not your friend. Why didn't Allah tell him that a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, five hundred years ago? What kind of preaching is this? That you tell people that because you're a believer, you have to have hatred for non-Muslims, even if they're in your family. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Yes, the mushrikun were humiliated. Yes, the kuffar are hated in the Quran, but not all kuffar. Not all kuffar. The worst of the enemies of this deen. Those that have demonstrated hatred and poison against Islam, we stand tough against them. And even against them, the second they take shahada for ikhwanukum fid deen. In a split second, the guy who used to hate looking at his face is your brother in deen.